Everybody and welcome back to Hollow's Night. Um, Mark experiences Halloween special game. Um, it is a small campaign in the style of Over the Garden Wall, um, where we play um, Babes in the Woods, which is a small RPG game uh, written by Adam Vass and the World Champ Gaming Company, um, which is inspired by. Over the Garden Wall, and other similar modern fairy tales about young children being whisked away into other worlds, like um, Alice in Wonderland, with the Wizard of Oz, etc. Um, the original Isekai. Come out. <sighs> Hot take. <laughs> edit that out in post. <laughs> <laughs> edit, edit, Jamie, edit this whole episode out in post. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be an hour long of silence. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Um, the camera comes in in a heavily wooded area of the hollow, a mysterious spanning forest that our children have found themselves trapped and lost inside. A place outside of space and time. We see something moving through the trees, running. We hear heavy panting and panic as a teen rushes through the woods as quickly as possible and dives down a small hill, rolling down and finding on the other side a cave in a stone outcropping. He rushes inside as quickly as possible. The camera pans away from the cave and we see a nice autumn breeze blow through the trees, dropping a few of the leaves off of their branches and blowing them over to a tall, spindly figure. We see a humanoid figure with long limbs encased in a nice Victorian era suit. His face is a wolf skull and he has a red velvet top hat tilted to a jaunty angle. We see bits of grass and weed and wheat growing out from his collar and his sleeves, and the bottom of his pants and his shoes, and even from underneath his hat. He has a nice, exquisite silver cane that he is holding in one of his hands, and he whistles as he slowly walks down the small hill and begins approaching the cave. As he does, he almost seems to grow bigger, bigger than life as his form stretches outwards. We see tree roots growing out from the bottom of his pants and his shoes, and we see long branches seeping from his coat and his sleeves. Wheat, long and golden, begins spilling out from underneath his collar, forming a long, tall fan out behind him, and we see tree branches growing out and spiraling from the eye sockets of his skull. And as he stands, growing larger than life, covered in a autumnal verdant, spewing from underneath his clothes, he reaches a ivy-covered claw into the cave. And we cut away to a small, cozy room filled with light music. Um, we see our, 
our, I almost said <laughs> intrepid heroes. Um, <laughs> we, we see our lost children, um, the Anderson children, and their friend Oswin, the bat, um, asleep in a train car, surrounded by gentle music and the pleasing scent, the smell of pumpkin pie. Um, outside of the uh, train windows, we see a beautiful orange-red forest passing by at a steady pace, and the area is pleasant enough, and this is where we come in. Um, I would like you to describe your characters. Uh, Riley, first and foremost, the heck? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually curbing my language for this one. The heck? Yeah, we're going to, uh, also, because this is like a kid's story I book know. sort of feel, we're going to try to have no swears. Okay. Jamie, cut all of this out in post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll go first then. <laughs> Jamie, cut the spooky cutscene out in post. <laughs> no! Sorry. Oswin, how about you introduce yourself as you wake up first? Yes. Oswin um, is a, well, he looks like a little fruit bat that's wearing a striped bow tie that looks like two pieces of candy corn put tip to tip. Um, he's my character. He's technically a ten-year-old boy who was transformed into a bat during his time in the forest. He's been in the forest for a little while. He's not entirely sure how long, but I think we established it couldn't have been more than like a a week. No, we said you'd been uh, there for a while. A while. Um, we but said time it is hadn't weird been a year, forest. but it'd been a yeah. You thought you had only been here for about a week, but you'd been yeah. here for for you um like uh like it felt like a couple months maybe, like not quite a year, but around there. Um, I'll go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, my character is Tommy Anderson. Um, he is the um, little kid. Uh, he is like, how old did we say he was? I didn't write don't down. remember us specifying an age. Yeah, okay. about it's on there. Your sheet. Well, yeah. Oh, I am. Oh, I lovely. just got off from work. Let me be. <laughs> um, he's six years old, and he is a very a uh, friendly kid, but he kind of also likes kind of some of the weird, weirder stuff. He will go out and like if he thinks a leaf is cool, he'll pick up worms and such. He 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 looks like a little ch like cherub from like Renaissance paintings, like the little cherub Renaissance paintings, because I know those aren't actually what cherubs look like, but that's what he looks like, but with like blonde hair and. I remember, am I still in the pumpkin costume or is you that You are changed? absolutely still in the pumpkin outfit. Yes! Okay, because I wasn't sure because I thought uh, Tommy had to change, but... No, we put a white poncho over the pumpkin. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he's in a cute little pumpkin costume with a white poncho over it because you can bet your ass he still hasn't taken it off. I think we've taken them off. No. Your costumes? You're back in your costumes. You've just taken off the wedding outfits. Well, well, Tommy's poncho was over his costume. Carol would have taken it off. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> the wedding's I'm... over, Reese. <laughs> Let me wear the poncho! <laughs> it's gonna be so hot in there for Tommy. Eh. Um. Eh. Alright, you good? Mm-hmm. Reese? I'm done, yeah. Okay. I am playing Carol Anderson. She is 14, the older sister of Tommy. She is wearing a those plasticky cloth cotton king's robes with a horrible plastic golden red scepter. She has like the the white and plasticky gold tunic with a red robe with fake speckled white and black fluff around the collar and a matching king's crown. Like, English king's crown on her head. Um, yeah. And she's also got the blonde hair and the blue eyes that Tommy has. She also wears thick, square-ish glasses. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you are all slowly coming to on a train that you got on previously. 
Yeah. Oswin is currently hanging on to the side of Tommy's uh, pumpkin outfit. <laughs> Did Oswin tell us where he got the tickets? Not last time. <laughs> well, we didn't really establish yeah. an ending. We can say that Oswin did now, yeah, if you Oswin like. Oswin definitely would have been like, Scary Wolfman gave me a ticket. <laughs> you probably told that to us after we got on the train. Because yeah. Carol's like, a freaky old man, a freaky wolf man, why, why are we on this train? <laughs> he got on the train and Carol's like, by the way, Oswin, where did you get the tickets? <laughs> mm, don't worry about it. Meanwhile, Tommy's just humming and kicking his little feet. <laughs> and definitely still like singing like the wedding tunes, like humming them, but it's always it's a little like off. Yeah. Because Tommy doesn't remember it. He's six. Also he probably has no pitch. Oh yeah, absolutely that too. He's not Oh, are we are you said that we woke up here. Are we like in the the bed part of the train where like there's just beds embedded into the walls? Yeah, are we in a bed car or just, like, a sitting car? Um, you were in a sitting car. Ah, we woke up in, like, a seat. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 it's, like, got, da, da. like, nice cushions and, like, velvet curtains and stuff. Like, it's it's a well-appointed, but, Are the you know. train car, is it the the room train car cushions? Or is it, like, just rows of train seats? Um, Like, Harry there's... Potter train. Yeah, it's closer to, like, a Harry Potter train, but it takes up the whole, uh, the, like, this isn't a very large train. Like, um, there's maybe two rows of seats, um, in this, uh, like, train that take up, uh, like, along the sides of the wall. Um, okay. and, like, with the windows, uh, behind the top of the seats. And then there's an open walking space in the middle. Um, Yeah. Oswin is gonna fly up and hang from one of the curtain rods next to the window. Oswin, you smell pie. Ooh. Yeah. He's hungry. He just took a nice, good nap, and he's hungry. So, uh, you guys, you guys want to go look for some food with me? Yeah! You, you know when little kids are trying to kick themselves, like, down? Yeah, like a little and so, Yeah, like, he kind of, like, you hear, eh, and he gets down. And he goes down there, and he's like, "I did it! I did it! Good, good job, Incredible. Tommy." Um, I think in the meantime, we should also be keeping an eye out for maybe a conductor or an employee, so we can figure out where we're going. As you say that, a deep rumbling, a rumbling voice comes over a speaker system. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the train is proceeding on time. We will be arriving at our destination in a mere matter of moments. Thank do, do, you do, do, do. for your patience. <laughs> Please leave baggage unattended. <laughs> Wait, that's not right. <laughs> you know what? In this world, it might be right. Anyway, right. <laughs> Would the food car be in the f behind or in front of us? Let's go find out. We can't just split ways. We gotta find out which way the the pie is. There are two doors. One at the top of the um at the top of the train uh, carriage that you're in, and one at the back. I mean, I'd assume we know which direction we came in from, right? <laughs> you don't really remember. Mm. You're right. We just teleported to this train. You remember sitting at a train station and hearing an announcement saying that the train would be pulling up soon? And then, like, but you kind of, like, woke up and you're like, oh, man, we must have, like, dozed off after we got on. And uh, I'm so tired at. after that wedding. Mm -hmm. You, uh, yeah, you, you kids partied. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> did, Tommy did hard time. <laughs> I was gonna say Tommy was in jail. Um, I'm gonna say Tommy goes... Oswin, can you follow your nose? Follow your nose! Find the pie! Yeah. Um, is that a thing I can roll for, Riley? <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> um, Oswin, if you want to roll I, Gander... Can I roll to... Forest Expert? 
<laughs> no, forest expert is not is not. It's relevant about knowing where we're going, right? So if we want to know how to get to the train car, I believe it is referring to the world at large. Not do I go one train car over or one train car over the other direction. <laughs> You're no fun, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I would like All you right. to do well, Do you want me to roll instead? Gander? Yes. <laughs> All right. At least that's one of the ones I have a bonus mm-hmm. on. Or uh, not not a negative on. So. Do-do-do. I got an eight. Not bad. An eight for Gander. What does yes. that get you? So I get to ask two questions. One answer will be true and the other will be a lie. Absolutely. Um, Riley, are you sure that this is... The Riley, this doesn't seem to be the move that I should be asking if I want to know where to go. I feel that it is. What happened here recently? Who made the pie? If you want, I would say if you want to know what direction the pie went, what happened here recently is probably a good one for that. Where's the pie? What should I be wary of? <laughs> yeah, the pie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I want to ask what happened here recently, as well as what here is not what it appears to be. Okay. Because um, we don't sure. currently remember which direction we came on, so. And I get to lie to you? Yeah. Why yeah. Not? Oh, so that's incredible. Lie. Okay. Um, <laughs> Just lie. Nobody's baking a pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know that the pie cart probably headed from the conductor's area down, so it seems like the smell, the reason why the smell is so strong in here is because the pie cart just passed through here and went into oh. what the carriage behind you. We missed and it. And what here is not as it appears to be nothing. This is a perfectly ordinary, very nice train. Mm, Thank you for making it so obvious. Yeah, I know which one's the lie. I don't, Do we, I don't like, I don't want to Do lie to you. Know. <laughs> me. Do we the t- plot twist, the train, the pie cart has not yet come through, yeah. and there is actually <laughs> nothing here. The, the pie, pie is alive. The started in the caboose and went towards the conductor. I've got you now. <laughs> You've solved my pie riddle. <laughs> you failed uh, my pie riddle. Uh, no. You failed um, it? Oswin kind of sniffs from his perch on the, the um, curtain rod, and he's like, uh... I, I think they're headed that way. Maybe we can catch up to them. Oh, that's kind of in the opposite direction of the conductor. Why do you want to go see the conductor anyways? I don't know where we're going. I have left you with a conundrum. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crackles you. the marquee of the hollow. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say on the ticket? Do we still have the tickets? You guys start padding around for the tickets. You don't know where they are. By the way, guys, Tommy's already started following the pie. Oh, <laughs> no. out of here, yes. <laughs> Allison's like, in the moment they're like, in the moment Carol looks down to start looking for the ticket, because Allison's <laughs> not carrying the tickets, Allison's a bat. <laughs> Allison just Tommy. heads after Tommy. Carol looks up to find herself alone in this carriage and just bolts after you scream. The door just like closing behind them. <laughs> or, I keep forgetting um, Carol has such incredible. bad anxiety because of Tommy. So you all move down one train um, car into the next carriage, and you see an almost identical um, train-like car- uh, room to the one you were just in, save for the fact that this one is filled with um, people, and I'm using people in a very loose sense of the word. Um, you see a, a snack cart being pushed by a Raggedy Ann doll that is the size of a human woman. Um, like mm. five six, a, a five foot six Raggedy Ann doll, um, mm. and oh, that's above me. <laughs> um, her and she is in this cornflower blue like d- like uh, dress with a the little like train dress, yeah. badge, yeah, and a little hat. Um, and above her head is is flapping a very large bright scarlet red butterfly. Um, and she, and the Raggedy Ann is pushing this snack cart that has little pieces of pumpkin pie and cider, little tiny, like, old-fashioned cookies, like, wrapped up in wax paper, and, um, little snacks and, like, toffees, and, um, also appears to have some form of, like, coffee in a little thing that she can pour out. Um, at the very back 
is what appears to be like a a teenage boy who was dressed in like old um like he's dressed like a newsies where he has the little paper boy cap that he's like pushed down in front of his eyes he has like tousled um like reddish brown hair that's kind of messy he has a toothpick sticking out of his mouth and he has like a little plaid uh like jacket and waistcoat and uh like baggy trousers those really high old-fashioned socks the thing that sets him apart from you as children is the fact that he has very large fairy wings spread out behind him i i okay hold on hold on yeah this is our second episode Mm -hmm. chap and we're on a train chapter two of the adventure zone was murder on the rockport limited shoot is this angus mcdonald no he's like a like he, he looks like a punk teen no, like he, this is our Angus McDonald. <laughs> this is the our cooler Angus, McDonald. Angus McDonald. This is Christian Bale's character in Newsy, <laughs> but like a fairy. Um, and at the other, uh, getting um himself a couple slices of pumpkin pie is a large boar. Um, just black, shaggy, matted fur, um, like, red eyes that are, like, facing different directions, and these, like, large, pointed tusks, and he is dressed, um, in just, like, these very messy, like, workerman, like, tailor clothes, and he has, like, a little tape measure, and he, he has, like, a bag that sits, sat next to him in the chair that looks like it has a bunch of cobbler supplies, um, and he has helped himself to three pieces of pumpkin pie, which are all on their own little dishes. So he is just <laughs> stacking these little dishes on his arm. Um, and that is what you see in this room. Oswin immediately flies over and, like, grabs onto the front of the cart and is like, trick or treat! Oh! Um, Tommy sticks out his little pumpkin, uh, his plastic pumpkin basket. He goes, trick or treat! <laughs> <laughs> the raggedy and like turns and tilts its head and looks at you and it just has those like painted on circle eyes um and it just like looks at Oswin for a moment and then slowly with a cloth hand reaches out and picks up Oswin <laughs> and sets Oswin on Tommy and then just puts two pieces of pie in Tommy's little pu- like pumpkin candy holder oh yeah <laughs> just like drops them in <laughs> Dawson's immediately diving in after and then like pours you two little tin cups of cider oh Carol you better get in here or you're not gonna get any <laughs> Carol <laughs> kicks the door down Carol kicks the door down <laughs> <laughs> tiny little king just <laughs> in the little like red robe with the white and black uh, fluff around Yay. the collar no, she doesn't do that. But she does run in and, like, stop panting right behind them. <laughs> like, stop running off! <laughs> um, the Raggedy Ann, like, silently turns and looks at you and just is staring. Um, and, like, is not moving as this large boar helps himself to a fourth little piece of pumpkin pie. And he's, They've like, gotta wiggling... be running out of pumpkin yeah. pie at this he's, point. <laughs> he's, like, wiggling his little hoof fingers, and he goes, Oh my gosh. Oh, but of course, I see the children have chosen side, which is an excellent decision. But I, I can't help but find myself being drawn to the coffee. Madam, what kind of coffee is that? Is it black? Or have you added any milk and sugar? And the Raggedy Ann's head slowly turns and looks at the boar and um the little butterfly flaps down and and lands on the raggedy ant's head and goes uh she can't raggedy ann can't um answer you and it's just it's just black coffee we have a little bit of milk and sugar if you'd like to add that but it's it's just black and goes um, right, um, is there any extra f- charge if I want to take a small cup of coffee and a small cup of cider? And, um, the butterfly very exasperatedly goes, there's no charge, this is all complimentary by the Marquis, you're welcome to help yourself. And, um, the boar goes, ah, oh, yes, of course, of course. And, um, he starts, um... Swipes everything off the table into his yeah. lap. He takes a little tin cup of cider and he pours it into his, ma- his giant mouth and it's just like a drop. 
And then he sets that down and he takes a little bit of coffee and he pours that into his mouth and it's just a drop. And he looks at his two empty tin cups and is so sad. <laughs> um, hi, uh, Miss Butterfly? Um, I have a question. You, there's no need to be formal. My name is Irene. Uh, Hi, how can I help you? Hi, Irene. Um, we were wondering if you knew where this train is going to stop next. Oh, uh, I, did you just miss the conductor? He assures us that we'll be stopping any moment. Do, do you know where? Uh, I can't say that I'm certain. We have a, a lot of stops, We, you know? I would like to say Tommy is not in the conversation. Tommy is munching on the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tommy and Oswin the... are just like sitting in a chair Pieces next to the bar. Oswin's still in the pumpkin bowl. Yeah. <laughs> in the pumpkin bowl. In the yeah. pumpkin bowl. Yes, excellent. Um. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry, I've been kind of keeping myself busy with the. Uh, with the passengers on the train, I haven't really been paying attention to where we are in the tracks. But uh, the conductor says that we're getting close, so we probably will be stopping any moment. Um, Raggedy Ann turns and stares at you. Silently. <laughs> Carol just kind of tenses, nods, and slowly turns and sits down across from Tommy and Oswin. <laughs> uh, Carol doesn't get any of the train snacks? Mm, she probably, like, grabs little bits of crust from Tommy's because he's not eating that. Okay. Um, Carol, you sit opposite of Tommy because Tommy sat down next to the boar. Um, <laughs> and the boar kind of turns and is looking at you, Tommy. And, like, is eyeing your piece of pumpkin pie and, like, licks his lips and, like, leans down with his big <laughs> wet nose. That boar is going to eat you. I say, small child, do you? plan on finishing that. And he points at your tiny little slice of pumpkin pie. That you're in the middle of eating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll share! And he breaks it apart and holds one out. Ah, how wonderful to see that children these days still know their manners. Excellent, excellent. And he um, reaches into his um, jacket pocket and he pulls out a silver knife and mm. fork that are far too small for him. What? And he cuts mm. off a sliver of pumpkin pie and, like, takes it and places it into his mouth and, like, licks his chops. And goes, <clears throat> Ambrosia, don't you agree? Does Tommy know what that means? <laughs> no. <Question. laughs> no, Tommy is six, but he's just gonna nod his head like he understands. Carol's mm -hmm. just like, mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, Mr. Boar, um, where did you come from? Please, please, Mr. Boar was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Beauregard. <laughs> boy. I'm but... going to kill you. <laughs> I'm the town cobbler, you see, over at Hampstead. Just a little bit up the tracks. Oswin pops his head out of the, the bu bucket and he's like, Hampstead sounds like a great place. Oh, it's excellent! Excellent, Debrat. Oh, the nightlife is fantastic. What restaurants, what cuisine, what food. I was in jail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see on the other side of the train in like kind of the shadows, the like the teen fairy in the newsy outfit kind of like smirks a little bit. And They're like not Angus McDonald. <laughs> He's not! He's like a teen rowdy boy. That's he's what not I a said. sweet the boy. Not Angus McDonald. <laughs> he like twirls. <laughs> not every like young person in a news cap is Angus McDonald. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he's got fairy wings and he looks like he's a rowdy boy. Carol yeah, like throws her <laughs> hands up in the air. She's like, it was an accident. It was an accident. It was a misunderstanding. He wasn't actually in jail. Oh, how dreadful! Oh, how dreadful! It's what a shame that these things happen. 
I'm sure that the... What are they called? The, the, the little nutcracker men that run around. The Marquis men. I'm sure that they do the best that they can, but <laughs> of course, of course, they make mistakes. They're not very bright fellows, I do say. Excuse me. And um, the, the cart has been slowly making its way towards the door, and Raggedy Ann freezes, and Irene goes, of course, sir. Is there anything else? And he goes, I, I, I do believe that I could use another couple of smackerels from your delightful little car. And Irene sighs and goes, of course, sir. And, and slowly just walks backwards into the exact position that she was in. And he begins to take uh, little plates of pie off again. Uh, customer service um, at its finest. Mm -hmm. I was going to say. <laughs> um, Beauregard keeps talking. Do we uh -oh. understand what he's saying as he's eating food? <laughs> he's no. just, you know, he's just, he's like talking. And the little pieces of pie are small for children. So they are like nothing for this massive boar man. Ugh. Why are he's they like, so small? Like popcorn he's just, like pie. dropping them into his mouth. <laughs> Why are they th so small? They're little train snacks. Speaking of popcorn, is there kettle corn on the cart? There absolutely is, like, old-timey kettle corn. Yes. Probably also wrapped up in a little wax bag. Mm -hmm. Yep, Oswin's gonna hop onto the cart, and he starts, like, <laughs> he <laughs> grabs a, one of those bags in his mouth and, like, flaps his way back over to Tawny. <laughs> Irene, like, protests. She's like, excuse me, sir, you can't just... <sighs> um, and she's immediately distracted by, um, Beauregard, like, um trying to take one of the the saucer like the little uh saucer of milk that they've provided and pour it into his coffee but he has confused all the little tin cups he has and so he's pouring milk into his cider and irene oh, no. is now trying to stop this from happening but it's too late and she is a little butterfly <laughs> tommy just is staring in like that childish horror of not knowing what is going on Oswin um, drops the, the bag into Tommy's bucket and is like, Tommy, I need you to help me open this. Uh, okay. Uh, Tommy, Tommy just... you can't get the ding dang thing open. No, no. Got a little twist tie. Kids just yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no. It's, the twine that it's like tied shut with is tied really tight. And your yeah. chubby little sticky child Ooh. hands are immune to it. Carol, yeah. hold her hand out. Yeah, and Tommy just holds it, just past you and goes, open, please. Carol, you can't for the life of you undo this twine. What? <laughs> it's like steel thread. What? Can I roll step up? You're a big kid and you have to protect those who can't protect themselves. <laughs> I must feed this boy. <laughs> this is for blocking or deterring attacks. An this is fun. on my little boy's head. Okay, if I did not let Oswin <laughs> use their forest okay. knowledge move to know where the pie is, I'm absolutely not going to let you use step up to undo twine. Can I roll teeth? For I'm, like what? <laughs> I want to roll teeth. I use my teeth on it. Um as you go to bite it, you hear like, "Here, you can use this." The 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 teenager on the other side with the fairy wings. He's walked over and he's pulled out a like a butterfly knife, ah! and he <laughs> uh like flicks and cuts the uh twine off, and then like spins it around and puts it into his pocket. Good lord! Uh, just, as it's in my mouth and I'm trying to pull on it, just no. Nice as in you're your face. going to place it into your mouth. Tommy's eyes are now white, and he goes, oh, That was so cool! There's no need to act like animals. Can I see the knife? And Tommy's with his grubby baby hands! Oswin has dived into the bag of popcorn. I'm gonna roll brace open. yourself on my pride. <laughs> yeah, sure, kid. And he tosses you the knife. <laughs> oh, <my> yes! <laughs> um, would I have to roll anything to, 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 to pull catch it? it? You catch it, it's closed. <laughs> Oh, okay. And, okay. Um. So Tommy just 
goes, ooh, and starts fiddling with it way too close to his face. <laughs> um, you cannot figure out how to open this thing. Mm? Tommy is going to figure it out, damn it. <laughs> right. And he leans down and he, like, looks at you and he's, like, twisting the toothpick in his mouth and he goes, there's a trick to it. Huh? And Tommy's just wide-eyed. Yeah? Tell me. I want to know. Flip it over. Uh, um, Tommy does that. <laughs> if you do, you see, like, it, it has, like, wooden handles. Um... Did I say butterfly knife? I'm, I'm describing a switchblade. I do not know yeah. why I said butterfly knife. I was like, you um, are describing a switchblade. Yeah, I don't know what I am doing. Um, Wait, a there... butterfly knife, it has two handles that can flip around kind of like yeah, a Yeah, no, tool. I don't know why I said butterfly knife. I think it's because there's literally a butterfly in this scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it is a switchblade. Um, um, butterfly knives like, are so uh, much cooler, though. Yeah. There is um on the... On the wooden handle, there's like engraved a like a twi a twisting pumpkin vine, and there oh. are different pumpkins. It's on your it. symbol, Tommy. And he's like, if you can Thank figure you. out which order to rub your thumb across the pumpkins on, it'll right. It'll just pop right open. Ah! <gasps> and Tommy, let me say, Tommy's still doing it incredibly close. How big is this fairy? Uh, he looks like he's like a like a 15, 16 year old boy. Okay, so he's like our size. Yeah. Well, well like Carol's size. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Carol's Not, 14, so. I was Not just imagining Tommy. like a one foot fairy carrying a knife the size of itself. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's like he's a, he's like the size of a human. Right? Um I do believe you've oh. met uh Beauregard. Uh my name is Herbert. And Herbert? you might be? I'm Tommy! Nice to meet you, Tommy. Charming little outfit you have there. Thank you! I picked it out myself! Exquisite. I'm Carol. Uh, thanks for giving my six-year-old brother a knife. And he's just having the time of his life. <laughs> Because in these woods, frankly, I believe every six-year-old child should have a knife. <laughs> I would like to say I love Herbert with all my heart already. Like, And you might be, and he looks at the little bat um, that is now chowing down on uh, kettle corn. <laughs> yeah, Oswin, like, pops his head up like a piece of kettle corn just in his little bat mouth. And he drops it really quick, and he's like, I'm Oswin. And then he picks it back up and starts chomping on it. Oh. Right. Nice to meet you, Oswin, Carol, Tommy. He moves across, and he sits across from you, and he crosses his legs and, like, leans down and, like, slouches. Wait, so he's um, sitting next it... to me? Um, no, he's sitting across the... from... Uh, yeah. Oh, across uh, the, the, hall. the um, train hall. Okay. Raggedy Ann and Irene are now um, slowly making their escape. With a mostly empty cart. Um, <laughs> Beauregard sighs very sadly, reaches into his cobbler's kit, and pulls out a sandwich. Uh, and he starts to eat the sandwich. Oh. Okay, is it like a is it like a good sandwich or is it a boring like bologna and mayo? Oh, it's a good sandwich. This oh. thing is stuffed. Ooh. Oh damn. Well, Austin's got his popcorn, so he's good for now. Yeah. Carol's stomach grumbles a little, but she looks away. Goes, so, how long have you all been on the train? Uh, Don't look familiar to me. It's, time, time is weird here, but I think we got here last night. Mm, right. What stop are you getting off on? The next one? Ah, and when do you suppose that will be? Mm, the, con uh, the conductor said soon, so I assume soon. As you say that, the conductor's voice comes over the um, speaker system. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your conductor speaking. The train is running on schedule. I hope you have enjoyed the 
snack cart as provided by Raggedy Ann and Irene. We will be pulling into the station in a mere matter of moments. Thank you for your patience. And the speaker system turns off again. Thank you, Mr. Conductor Man. Oh, I have a suspicion. Herbert's eye twitches. Um, this this might be a weird question, but, um, has this train ever stopped? Um, he shrugs. How did we get on the train? He chuckles and shrugs. How do we get off the train? He throws back his head and laughs. Oh, dear. Why do we get the train? <laughs> Who did we get on the train? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Herbert just, like, laughs. And um, he's, like, laughing really hard. And he, like, gets up and, like, like rubs his eyes. He's like, oh, right, good one. <laughs> And he walks out of the train car. I, 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 that wasn't a joke. <laughs> um, and Beauregard puffs and through a mouth full of sandwich, which he just kind of dropped into his maw, he goes, <laughs> Don't mind him. Didn't you hear the conductor? We'll be pulling up to Hampstead shortly. I'm sure of it. How long have you been waiting for your stop? No, oh, well, you know how these things are. Train rides are such <laughs> quite slow, aren't they? Listen, if we couldn't get off the train, wouldn't there be like a ton more people on the train? We're fine. It is exactly how murder mysteries go. How what? Go what? It's fine. It's fine. Carol, like, gets up and just starts pacing back and forth. She is freaking out. Uh... Hey. Hey, Tommy. What? I'm bored. Do you want to walk up and down the train? Yes! And Tommy's already out the door. Still with the switchblade, mind you! Oh my god! <laughs> Every... <laughs> Did not ask! He cannot figure out. If you're going to leave, uh, Herbert, like, oh, Herbert left. <laughs> Never yeah, mind. and he laughed about the switch. <laughs> yeah, because he was laughing so hard, he's just like, oh, go. Uh, he he thinks off. Tommy has the switch blade, and mm -hmm. Tommy is fiddling where he said to open it. Yeah, you're just, you're rubbing pumpkins trying to figure out how to open the switch blade. Okay, he told Tommy, so Tommy will figure it out. Which way does Tommy mm -hmm. go? Following the train, following the food cart, or away from the food cart? There is only one door in this cart. This looks like it's the last one. Oh, uh, okay. So they went back up to the front. Okay, you move back into the train car that you were all in when you woke up. And, um... Are there windows? You, uh, there are windows outside, yeah. Can I open a window? No. Hmm. You can look out the window, though. Is there, like, a hatch on the top of the train? Because usually that's there. Uh, not that you can see. Hmm. Is there a secret hatch in the floor? <laughs> not that you can see. <laughs> da, da, da. Carol marches onward. <laughs> Does Tommy go into the next car forward? Yep, this is Tommy's just continuing. Okay. Tommy doesn't care. Um, you step into the carriage and you see this snack cart, um, again with, uh, Irene and Raggedy Ann. Um, in the seats, you see Herbert, um, who is, like, still kind of, like, smiling to himself. In another seat, you see two little beetles, um, one in a very nice, like, old pilgrim outfit, and the other in, like, a pilgrim dress. Um, and they are sharing a seat together, these two tiny little beetles, the size of beetles. And then, um, in another seat, you just see a straight-up uh, straight skeleton. Riley! 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 Yeah? Yeah. Can I make an animal companion with the beetles? 
Please, <laughs> please. Again, they are wearing full outfits. I These don't are people care. beetles. You yeah, can only do it with like non sentient ones. Uh, we're in a magic world, which what is non sentient animals? Just a normal animal. There are normal animals. We have not encountered any so far. We'll find some soon. <laughs> and I want a, an animal companion. So Tommy's just like, uh, hi, um, what's going on here? And he's just kind of gesturing both to the beetles and the skeleton, like, moving the arms. What, what's, what's going on? The skeleton does not move. <laughs> of course it is does. just a skeleton in the seat. Just like, like... I is know it you just, can't like, see... draped over the seat? Yeah, like, it's yeah not it even, is like, just upright. draped over, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ta- I feel like Tommy goes... What happened to the to the to your friend? The beetles look at each other. Um, Herbert, like Herbert, suddenly grows deadly serious, and he leans forward and he steeples his hands in front of him, and he goes, "That is the skeleton of someone that was trapped on this train." Carol screams. <laughs> Carol's not even in the room. <laughs> Herbert and the skeleton burst out laughing. <laughs> the skeleton straightens up and is like clapping its hands together. <laughs> Tommy goes, Herbert, 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 can we, can, can you carry me through? Piggyback ride. Or, no, you have wings, not piggyback. Uh, Herbert like picks ride. you up and sits you down on his shoulders. Yeah! <laughs> Tommy goes, Woo! which is great because Oswin's on top of Tommy, so mm-hmm. now we've got. Yes! So now you're both getting, uh, you're both getting a ride from Herbert. Carol's gonna roll for sad. Carol rolled an eight. She's very sad. <laughs> he goes, I would like to introduce you to my very dear friend Orwell, and Orwell, uh, the skeleton. Like at, after it's done laughing. <laughs> He goes, <laughs> right, right, yes, I'm so sorry, I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist. <laughs> oh, it gets them every time, it gets them every time. It's just a little, it's a skeleton joke, right? It's a skeleton joke. I lay down, I pretend to be a skeleton. Oh, it's so good, yes. Oh, they, they fall for it every time. Uh, I am Orwell. It is a pleasure to meet you. I I love Orwell so much. Orwell's great. <laughs> The Jamie part of Orwell. me is like, yes, I love Orwell. <laughs> Oswin looks over at Orwell and is like, Orwell, I know you're a skeleton, but you're not wearing a costume. It's Halloween. You're wearing nothing. Uh, Orwell looks down and, uh, you know, kind of stares down at his skeletal frame and looks back up and goes, Right, yes, I do suppose that would make me naked now, wouldn't it? Do you need my pumpkin outfit? I have, like, I have stuff, like, shirt and pants under. I don't believe it would fit, small pumpkin child. But I appreciate the offer. No, I prefer to be, I prefer to be free. Feel the breeze on my bones, as it were. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, but Jamie, just the fact that I would like to say, Reese thinks Herbert is sus as hell. But Tommy loves Herbert. But I also love Herbert. But I think Herbert <laughs> is such a hell. Thing. It's the op- well, same but opposite thing with Orwell. Carol is terrified of Orwell, but I love Orwell. <laughs> like, I know something's up with Herbert, but I also still love him. And I know Tommy would adore him. Carol kind of just starts inching through the train car to the other end. <laughs> oh. Um... You open the door, and on the other side is a big, like, you, uh, is a big, um, steel, it's the engine, uh, of the train, it's the front, where the steel oh. locomotive is. So it's only like three, three cars. Three car train. Mm-hmm, it absolutely is. And, that is um, very small. The door is, like, this massive steel wrought door, and it has a tiny little slide that is shut on it. Carol knocks on it. Um, after a moment, the little slide opens, and you see a brilliant glowing blue eye about the size of the slide, like, pushed up against the slide, and it looks down at you. Hi, uh, I was just wondering if we could talk for a moment. 
The eye blinks. <laughs> just for a moment, just for the comfort of the passengers, I just had a question that might clear something up. You know, my, my friends were being all worried. <laughs> Cuts to Tommy and Oslin, <laughs> who are absolutely not worried. Having a, a horseback ride on Herbert. I was like, we're having the time of our lives! What do you want, child? Um, well, just because of, like, my little brother being anxious and hyper, uh, we were wondering what time you might <laughs> think we will be stopping, just to get his nerves down a little. We will be pulling into the next stop in a matter of moments. Yeah, it just seems like you've been saying that for a very long time. The slide is shut. So that's... Uh-oh. That if I kick down the door... You are, like, 14! The steel plate door? I was like, you, yes. You are 14! You're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you somehow know s m several different types of martial art. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> this is a very small train. It <laughs> is really small. I will admit that. I don't like this. Uh, Tommy's just enjoying the piggyback rides with Herbert. Tommy is literally oh, yeah. just like having the grandest of times. Herbert grows tired and is like, all right, and he tosses you down onto a chair, which Woo! you see, like, his stuff, um, y he's got, like, an umbrella and, <gasps> like, an old, like, duffel bag style, like, almost Mary Poppins style, uh, bag. Oh my gosh. I love that. And Tommy's like, ooh, what's in the bag? He goes, right, well, do you promise to be very good? Yes, the only reason I was in jail is because the nutcracker was mean. Right. Do you promise to tell no one of what you see inside? Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> Come close. Tommy leans in. Uh, Oswin, are you also on yeah. the pumpkin still? Okay. Yeah. And he goes, and I expect the oath of secrecy from you as well, Oswin. And he glances furtively to the left at the beetles that are um, making out on the chair. <laughs> oh, my God! Um, and he glances at um, the snack cart and uh, Raggedy Ann and Irene, um, who are not really paying attention. Um, and then he slowly zips open the bag. And he slowly tilts it over so you can look inside. And it is filled with leaves. <gasps> Tommy goes, <laughs> whoa! Wait, I love leaves! I love leaves! He goes, they are the prettiest fall leaves that I can come across. And he <gasps> pulls one out and he twists it in his hand. And like, it's, a, it's you know, these gorgeous, big, perfect, crunchy, not broken, just absolute perfect, like, fall autumn leaves, like, fresh off the branch. Osmond's like, he's like, he's like, okay, but also kind of disappointed because it no. wasn't what he was expecting. Uh, no, Tommy is literally You're expecting contraband. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tommy is literally like wide eyed. This is like Tom. I literally said uh, for Tommy's the listeners, dream is to find them perfectly. <laughs> uh, to I was gonna say yeah, like to in the listeners uh, who are new. Um, when I first did it, I I just remembered Tommy loves looking for leaves and picking up like li nice leaves and like all that. I know I said I like Tommy likes all that stuff, but uh, but I never specified Tommy loves fall leaves. Oh my gosh! He goes, tell you what, I'll give you my favorite <gasps> if you give me back my knife. Aww. <laughs> fine. Fair trade. Okay. And Tommy just Thank hands the goodness. knife back. He places the leaf he's twisting down back in the bag, and he starts to root around in it. And, um, Tommy, the leaves are covering something in the bag. Um, and then he pulls out a spectacular yellow golden leaf <gasps> that is just turning red at the ends. So it looks a little bit like, um, 
like a like a feather or like a piece of fire almost and it's it is perfect it is big it is crunchy it is that like hard and twisted way but it, it hasn't broken at all it is perfect and he reaches out his hand for the knife oh and then tommy starts reaching out and then tommy goes way um, as his focus is on Tommy, Oswin gets an idea and just yells, Leaf pile! And then dives towards oh. the bag. <laughs> Incredible, <laughs> Oswin. Uh, that's gonna be a roll for sure. <laughs> what am I rolling? Hmm. Cause me, mischief. Yeah, let me check cause mischief. I mean, Does it yeah, be a I trap, a deception, oh, you do or have cause mischief. Trick? But am I... Am I making up a scheme? I'm more just doing like a. <laughs> Does harm? This is like the attack move. <laughs> um. <laughs> he. Oh, that's right. They describe harm as emotional harm too. So this doesn't necessarily have to be attacking him. Um. Physically. Yeah. So what? <laughs> we'll do cause mischief. Sure. All okay. right. He'll take one harm of emotional damage. <laughs> Oh, I get to roll a noodle? Amazing. So I already described the plan. He's just gonna yell mm -hmm. leaf pile and dive in. <laughs> because that's what Oslin likes to do. <laughs> and I rolled a nine. Nice. Nice. Your scheme works and does one harm, but any items you use are destroyed in the process. I'm not using items, so. <laughs> but I could destroy your bow tie. No! Oh, no! <laughs> What would destroy my bow tie? <laughs> Whatever's in the bag. There could be a snake. If anything, here. I feel like I'd crush a leaf or something. Yeah. Um. You dive in. You crush leaves. You hit something hard on the inside Ow. of the bag. There's just like a layer of leaves placed on top. Um. It's like a shoebox. It's not the comfy leaf file I thought. No, it would be. it's absolutely not. Um. Like at the bottom of this bag, there's like it, it's there's a shoebox and like a doll. Um. Mm. And like pieces of candy, like tucked under the um, candy. Thing. And you hear Herbert go, Right, well, that's enough of that. And he reaches in, grabs you, and pulls you up and tosses you aside. He grabs his knife, tosses it into his bag, and he closes it. Wait, um, wait. He takes one emotional harm. He His eyes have grown cold and narrowed, and he goes, I believe that's enough for us. And he wait. gets up and goes, I will wait for our next stop at the back of the train with the pig. Wait. And he kind of storms out. No! And Tommy runs after him because Tommy didn't do anything! <laughs> oh, he grabs his umbrella. Uh, also. Yeah. Tommy Always rushes things. after and Tommy goes, wait, no! Wait! Did I get the leaf? I want the leaf! <laughs> you got the leaf. I did okay. I genuinely did not hear that. But Tommy's like, wait! Wait! You Carol don't get kind the leaf. of grabs your shoulders like, I think it's best to let him have mm -hmm. some alone time for now. Should Oswin have taken harm by being thrown out by... <laughs> <laughs> um, Considering I did get a 7 to 9. Yeah, I'll say you take one harm and um, Herbert takes one harm. Oswin kind of sits up like, that wasn't very nice. That hurt. Hmm. He's hiding something. Yeah, a bunch of junk under leaves. Suspicious junk. I thought the leaves were. I thought the leaves were the. <laughs> Tommy has been bamboozled. <laughs> Tommy has faced a deception. <laughs> An adult has lied to Tommy. <laughs> Tommy feels betrayed. <laughs> Is that a thing adults can do? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oswin sits up and is like, Do you think if I broke a bone, Orwell can help me? Uh. uh. Orwell goes, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't just have free bones, right? Like, these are all mine. <laughs> okay, you guys all believe that there's something weird going on here, right? 
Tommy it literally is looking like he's having the existential crisis, but he's sick. It's not, it's not just me, right? <laughs> Again, Tommy is looking like his whole entire worldview has been shifted. Um, <laughs> Everything well, here is weird, and everyone's really mean, especially the Marquis. I know that. I've been here a little while. But there's something bad about this train. Uh, I just... I w- I thought Herbert was cool! I wanna get off. Can I kick down a door? A window, I mean? <laughs> I'm like, there's three doors. Um, but... <laughs> if you have, like, a hard item to take a crack at the window I with. I have my staff. I was gonna say. Oh, yes you do, Isn't sure. Is like, a plastic staff, though? It's plastic. It's hard enough to, like, take a whack at it without hurting Carol's arms, though, I'd say. Um... I don't have an attack move, though. Um, yeah, when you roll, um, basic moves, you take a minus that you don't have, you take a minus two yeah. to them, correct? Right, I'm Carol's losing her mind, though. She's gonna do it anyway. Well, that's a two. Oh. <laughs> two total? Yep. yep. You smack a window with your scepter and it reverbs. Um, like a plastic see. bat, just bonk. <laughs> I get to do something mean. Oh now. no! Oh, because you've did a We're fail. I'm gonna get thrown out for trying to vandalize property. In my woods, you did a fail. In my woods, there are no fails allowed in my woods. Um, you snap your scepter right in half. No! No! Ah! No! I would like you to remove your item, please, Carol. Carol, do you have a qu- a Shakespearean quote for such a tragic moment? Probably do. Where is it? Uh, dr- I mean, there's dramatic, uh, situational. Yeah, I sorted them. I know. Final territory. <laughs> I remembered you added wedding. <laughs> Um, I would like to say... Yeah, I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> Which one? Um, Carol's just, like, kneeling on the floor, holding the remains of her scepter, which are just two large pieces of scepter, one in each hand, holding it like one would a lover that's dying. <laughs> and she just wails, A doubt so traitors! And make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt! <laughs> Tommy... <laughs> kind of both used to this and also a little confused. He just goes to the um to the uh sil- to the like steel door and knocks a few times. Um same thing happens. The little slide is pushed open and a bright blue massive eye that fills up the entire slide presses out. Uh Tommy goes, can can you can, uh, when can we get off of this? And I'm using grift. Because Riley's saying <laughs> do something against their son. Wait, hold up. Shouldn't Jamie have gotten to roll recite poetry? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Can we'll we cover that, that um, first before yeah, we... Yeah, we'll, we'll give J- Jamie can roll to recite poetry. Yeah. Throw hmm. the on. What am I adding to Plus recite zero. poetry Noodle. again? Plus zero. zero. And you know what? I will let you get your item bonus from this, so you get a plus one. This is your scepter's last hurrah. As it gives you a plus one to reciting this poem. <laughs> it's not enough. Aww. Got a six. Oh, no. Six on a recite, recite poetry. poetry. I get to take another DM. Oh, <laughs> Jamie gets two XP, so. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jamie! I'm almost leveled up. <laughs> the big kid is almost a big kid. <laughs> um, All right, sorry, Jamie. I should have not said anything. No, it's fine. I was hoping that like you'd have some dramatic revelation as your yeah, staff. Yeah, right? I was hoping so too. Man, Carol, while you are wailing this poem, you are like on your knees and you're looking out the window, tears in your eyes, holding the two pieces of your scepter. Um, the train passes by a town. Um, you see a sign. It says, Toffee Well. 
established population. Mm. When you're at Toffee Well, everything's sweeter. And you mm. see a small town populated by cats. Mm. Um. Carol is no longer bawling. She is staring wide-eyed out the window and she's frozen. Grift. Yeah, and now we'll, we'll cut back to Tommy. So I'm gonna roll Griff, because Tommy's directly asking this, I, can we get off? Like, Tommy wants to get off now. Tommy is upset. Tommy wants to go home. <laughs> so hold on. Tommy is directly, so I'm rolling that, and that's- <laughs> you're upholding my lie. Well, right now, to now Tommy's upset. Tommy just got betrayed. Hey, can Tommy get a plus one to this since I already well, said Tommy that Tommy was t nervous? Tommy has a plus two already. Plus three. Yeah, sure. Hell yeah. I'll, I'll count what happened last time as an aid. Uh, plus three? That's an 11. Nice. It says they trust you and will do what you say as long as it doesn't endanger them directly. Tommy is asking if they themselves can get off. Not not hurting the eye. <laughs> Hold still. The, the slide slams shut and you hear the sounds of locks being undone and a heavy steel wheel being turned. From the outside, we see the door open, and then a large, furry, black claw reach out, bigger than Tommy. <laughs> Gently pick up Tommy and pull him into <laughs> the conductor's room, and then the door closes. <laughs> um, Tommy, you are in the conductor's room. Uh, you're, you're in the, you're at the top of the train, you're in the, the, the train engine, you're in the, uh, conductor's area. Um, you are being held in the paw of the biggest badger you have ever seen. Um, it is this huge, enormous badger stuffed into a train conductor's outfit, and it is so big, it almost fills the entire, um, the entire room. Um, to the side, you see a pantry full of little snacks and, like, a small little kitchen area. And up front, you see um, all the apparatus to keep a, a steam train moving. And you see a chair over on the other side. Um, this, You ever see those pictures of, like, an animal being put into a cage that it's just a little bit too big for? So yeah. it looks like a square, perfect cube of, like, fluff and fat, like, being, like pushing out uh, the cage a little bit. Yes. That's what this badger looks like, but for this entire train room. And it has these bright blue piercing eyes. Um, and he is holding you in one of his hands. Uh, can we get my sister and my friend? Patience is important, little one. And he boops your nose. Okay! And Tommy's so much happier now. <laughs> it is my job to keep the train running on time. And he reaches into a, with his other hand, reaches into a container full of coal. He picks it up. He opens the furnace. And just with his hand, he puts the coal into the furnace. <gasps> Whoa! And then pulls it out. And then, like, shakes the embers off of the fur of his hand. <gasps> and he closes it. Oh, my God, it's so cool! <laughs> And he goes, child! And he, like, kind of tries to sit down, but it really, like, this area isn't big enough for him. <laughs> so he just kind of, like, maneuvers his butt a little bit more underneath him. And he goes, child, it has been a long time since I've conversed with one as small and cute as yourself. And he tossles your hair. <laughs> Thank you. Just Do you know any songs? Uh, Perhaps a joke. Uh, kind, kinda, maybe. I, I'm sick, so I kinda know only a few. I don't know a lot. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock! <laughs> Who's there? Banana! <laughs> Banana 
Yahoo! <laughs> knock, knock! Who's there? <laughs> At least he's patient. Banana! <laughs> Banana who? Knock, knock! Who's there? Orange! Orange who? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Oh! <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> this is the purest interaction ever on our show. This is the purest interaction. <laughs> delightful, delightful. You simply must stay here with me. We will tell each other jokes and sing each other songs to while away the hour. Okay. Tommy doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, he leans in very close and he goes, A ham sandwich walks into a bar and orders a bar. What's a bar? Why's a bar? Ah, quite. <laughs> the bartender says, I'm sorry. But we don't serve food here. Hey. Huh? What's a bar? Tommy's so caught up on the bar thing. Tommy doesn't know what a bar is. Hmm. I'll try one more. <laughs> and he's thinking. And he's thinking. And he goes, how about a song? Ooh. And he starts to yodel. Oh, no. And with that, we will cut back outside <laughs> to Carol and um, Osmond. Oh boy, Carol is freaking out. I yeah, I assume say... Carol's like at the door. Mm -hmm. I was gonna Carol's say... like screaming up uh, Tommy's name. <laughs> he cannot hear you over the yodeling. <laughs> I assume we can hear the yodeling. Yeah, the, there's like a faint yodeling. Coming. Tommy! Tommy, oh god, they're torturing me! <laughs> Tommy, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Orwell goes, oh dear, it started again. <laughs> this happens with some level of frequency. <laughs> um, He, like, <laughs> sticks fingers into non-existent ears. <laughs> Oswin gets up on, like, Carol's, uh, puffy king hat, and is like, Carol, can can you slide the, the little door open? Maybe? Carol, you can certainly try. I can try, can you put, yeah. put like, a palm against it and, like... Mm-hmm. If you forgot to lock it, it, like, Do if I have you, to roll you know, that? if you played your cards right, you should be able to move it. Yeah, I try. I was gonna say he was busy with a small child. I want this to be a roll, but I don't know what it would be. Um... I'm tempted to make this another cause mischief. Okay. It's gonna be a minus two for me. Yeah, and this will be emotional harm to um, the conductor. <laughs> Carol also has so much <laughs> emotional harm. That is noodle great. That's a five. Oh my Guess goodness. Guess what? Carol leveled up. <laughs> oh my god. Incredible. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Had this is tough, man. deciding our fate. <laughs> yeah. Carol was the one that rolled bad, huh? Yeah. Um. Oh, I know. Um, Carol. Yeah. When Oswin, uh, not Oswin, sorry, Orwell, when Orwell gets up, um, and stretches, um, and goes, I, I think I'll be moving over to the other car. Let's get a little, uh, yodely in here for my taste. Um, <laughs> this is hard, I love and it. he turns to the two beetles, and he goes, sir, madam, and he tips an invisible hat, <laughs> and he starts to walk out. You think, if you used Orwell... As an item, hmm. you could probably break the window. <laughs> We're not going to do that, right? I might. You know, a, like a skull or an arm, if you pop it off and you toss it at the window, you imagine that could break it pretty easy. You made it a bone. Um, give me one moment. 
<laughs> Carol just has gone completely feral. <laughs> <Stir> crazy. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Carol's little brother is possibly in danger, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. I was gonna say... Carol rushes over to him before he can leave, grabs his leg, stares into his eyes and says, Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, tears off his femur bone and slams it against the window. Are you rolling hurt or recite poetry for that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Poetry is about revealing something, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll do hurt. <laughs> okay. Oh, which one's hurt? Hurt is steam good. I've got steam. I might need to change out this die. This one keeps rolling once. I will give you a plus one from using um Orwell. Okay. <laughs> so it's good. A ten. Oh my god. Incredible. Um, so, Carol, you recite this poem. You look Orwell dead in his eye sockets and you whisper this poem, and Orwell goes, Do it quickly. And then you <laughs> rip his leg out, and he just like collapses into a pile of bones. And then you take his leg and you swing it and you smash the window, and glass goes spraying out into the wind. <laughs> you were like panting, you were holding this femur bone. <laughs> like a mad woman. Your hair is tousled, your glasses are askew. You, like, Hulk mode it. It's like those tales of mother who, like, got a surge of adrenaline and lifted a car. <laughs> oh my god. Carol, like, tosses the bone to someone. I don't know who. It's just like, I'm so sorry, put it back together. You and toss it back the into window. the pile of Orwell and go, Orwell goes, I knew I should have taken a horse carriage. <laughs> Carol's climbing out the window on top of the train. Oh, oh my, my gosh! gosh. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, Os Oswald's not gonna follow that. Like, Oswald's, Oswald's tiny, he'll get blown off of the I was gonna wind. say, like, Carol has gone completely feral. You are absolutely correct. Go, Carol, go! go One Carol, of Carol's go. fears is losing Tommy. Yeah! Go for it! <laughs> Oswald's cheering you on! <laughs> Yay! Go, Carol! This will be Skidoo, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna oh, say that. Well, it's Steam, so that's something. Okay, so that's... Well, it's minus two plus two, because I don't have that. So... Plus a zero, that's a nine. On a nine, you escape but create a complication. You leave something behind. You take something with you. You create tracks, etc. Hmm... Okay, you absolutely are leaving Oswin behind. Oh no! Yeah. Oswin's and, fine with that. <laughs> um, Carol, in your haste, what you didn't realize is you didn't toss the femur bone back to Orwell. Oh, you no! still have the bone in your hand. Oh no! <laughs> outside of it and like subconsciously using the bone to like stick into the grooves to like pull herself up and she gets to the top looks in her hand and goes um oh no you hear orwell's voice emanate from the leg bone oh go, easy there um i'm not a grappling hook <laughs> or any kind of hook for that matter for the moment you are i'm so sorry well it looks like we're Two halves of a three-legged race at this point, Adam. <laughs> this is too good. I'm losing my mind. If you drop me off this train, I will be very miffed with you. <laughs> I'm not going to throw you off this plane. Plane? <laughs> also, if you break me on anything, I will also be miffed. If Oral you... is my new favorite character in any... anything. Anything at all. I love Orwell so much. Name any show, Orwell is the new favorite. <laughs> Um, Carol is going towards the steam train part. Mm-hmm. You crawl over, um... I think there's usually, like, an opening on the top to, like, yeah, let out the heat. There is. Mm-hmm. Carol hops in. Oh my god. <laughs> Carol, you land on the back of the biggest, fattest badger you've ever seen, who is in oh, the middle oh of no. yodeling. Oh no! Carol uses Oral's leg as, like, a choking mechanism! No! Tommy is clapping! You crazy woman! <laughs> you land my brother, you demon! Carol! Ah, 
the conductor. Lovely. Chap, I have been meaning to speak to you about some of the amenities you seem to be lacking on your train. <laughs> the conductor's like, oh, 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 oh. And Tommy's like, Carol! Carol! And Tommy's like, smacking his like, stop! Carol eases up a little. Okay, Tommy, thank goodness you're okay. I heard him torturing you. No! Um, This is insane. <laughs> this is absolutely wild. Um, flying in behind you is Irene, who is just like absolutely shocked. She's like, oh my gosh, conductor, I, I don't understand. I don't know. She broke a window with that bone. She just threw it. She's got absolutely crazy. Oh, hello, Tommy. Um, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> he kidnapped my brother. No, he didn't. I asked politely. And the conductor goes, I did no such thing. I asked Big Girl, he picked me out of the room. I have been spending time with this delightful child. He likes my knock knock joke. I love his knock knock joke. Oh. <laughs> um, Carol slowly and just kind of ambles down his back. Mm, uh, there seems to have been a misunderstanding. I am um, testing my jokes, you see. And he leans down and he goes, What do you get when you overfeed a coin? What? What? A plumper nickel. <laughs> I get it now! I get it! <laughs> Ah, and he claps his like his massive claws, and it shakes the train. Um, like the force blows Irene <laughs> to the side. <laughs> I'm gonna go put Orwell back together. <laughs> <laughs> she just leaves. <laughs> just after all that, she's just like, "This is terrible." Um. <laughs> Carol, you open the door, you walk back into the first carriage in shame, you put these... Ter- the moment Carol opens the door, like, Oswin just dives in. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a bat, delightful. And, um, perhaps the bat can sing the high parts, and I will sing the low parts. <laughs> I'm glad he can still sing after being choked. Sing? Yeah! <laughs> Tommy's now humming the tune of the yodeling and is actually on pitch because yodeling is <laughs> yodeling is already wild. Yeah. <laughs> um Carol, as you start to put the, uh Orwell back together, like trying to you're doing your best to put his pieces together. Um <laughs> Orwell goes. For the first time in a long time I felt alive. <laughs> I'm sorry I tear, tore your leg off. Um, spur of the moment, you know. You were stricken with the madness. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it take hold of more level-headed men and women than you, my dear, in the mines. I've seen it. The madness. It takes them. Completely understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the conductor's train, um, the con- absolute best to have Osmond join him, Tommy, in a sing along. Um, Irene has been like mildly bullied into singing along, um, and so she is singing awkwardly. Um, Raggedy Ann has now entered into the room and is slowly setting back up the the, the snack cart. Oswin kind of, like, runs out of breath with one of the, the notes and is like, <coughs> All right, I'm done. Uh, Mr. Badger? Uh, I want to get off. Mm, well, you'll have to get off at our next stop, I'm afraid. I can't stop the train. We need to run the train on time. Yeah, but if you never stop the train, there won't be a next stop. But if we if I stop the train, we'll be late. Late for what? 
I'm not sure. The, the Marquis, you see, he likes his trains to run on time. Very strict schedule. What, what's on time? Um. Where are we going? To the next stop, I believe. But what's the next stop? Oh, well, there's no need to get to let me check. Um, and he turns and like pressed against a wall, like by his like thigh is like a like a piece of paper, and he tries to pull it out, and it tears in half. And so he kind of like pieces oh, no! it. He's holding the top half mm-hmm. he tore out um up to his face, and he like l- leans it over to one of his giant blue eyeballs. He's like, mm, it says that we would be. Passing by Hampstead in a little bit, well, it doesn't appear that we stop in Hampstead. Let me see. And he's tr- like fishing around, and he pulls out a uh, the rest of the piece of paper. Um, and after that, we'd be going by Littlewood, and then after that, we'd be coming up on Toffee Well, I believe. We just came from Toffee Well. Yes, of course. And after Toffee Well is Hampstead, and after Hampstead is Littlewood. And then, and then what's after Littlewood again? I, I believe it would be Toffee Well. Uh, but where are we stopping? Um. He truly looks confused. He does not understand. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Oswald, let me let, let me check. So, you have Toffee Well, you have uh, ha- ha- Hamst- ha- Hamstead. Hamstead, and you have Littlewood. So, if we keep going back, those are the three stops. Where are we stopping, though? We go from Toffee Wood to Hamstead, but we don't stop in Hamstead, right? Right, Mr. Badger? Hmm. Um, he scratches his nose. Then, from Hampstead, we don't stop, we go to Littlewood. But do we stop in Littlewood? No, we we pass by Littlewood, we're Little expected one. to... So, but then after that, we go past, to- we go past Toffee Well again. So where do we stop? Hmm. Um, Tommy, if you want to make a case for stopping the train, uh, I would like you to roll, grift. like, grift, yeah. Gr- I have grift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! Okay. And since Osmond has been helping you, I'll give you a plus one to this. Hell yeah! All right. Uh, that's a 12. <laughs> Incredible. Right. Um, they trust yeah. you and they will do what you say. This, this, is... ba- this badger loves Tommy. Tommy is Yeah, you've favorite. already rolled Griff. Um, I had it written down that you had to get uh, multiple successes on him. Um, yeah. That was a 12, you said? Yes, and the last one was okay. um, an 11, so... All right, so that does it, actually. Um, he goes... Yeah! Tommy being adorable <laughs> is what gets us through. Well... If it's an emergency, I suppose I could be made to stop at one of the places, I, I suppose, as long as it doesn't take too long. We can't delay the train. The market no. would be very upset. Would you? I think at this point you're ahead of schedule. Would you Would you need to be let off at Hampstead, or do you believe you'd need to be let down at Littlewood? Anywhere. Besides Toffee Well. Besides Toffee Well. That's well, what I believe said. we'll be coming up on Hampstead. Okay. Um, I'll stop the train. And he, like, he shoos you all out so he can turn. Um, it appears that turning around is, a like, a difficult process for him. Will um, literally smash us against the door. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be a whole thing. And he pulls a lever and the train, like, comes to a screeching stop at a train stop. In the very <gasps> nice town of Hampstead. We should tell the boar that he's arrived. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so- yeah. uh, and, and Tommy goes, thank you, Mr. Badger. It was nice sitting with you. And he's waving. It was a pleasure to sing with you as well, little Tommy. 
What a delightful <laughs> child. <laughs> the walls of the train kind of make doors and open them. Um, you see um, Beauregard, um, the cobbler, like get up and kind of squeeze himself through um, the doorway and he pops out and lands on the ground with his little bag and goes, oh, of course. Yes, that's the lovely thing about the trains in the market. What do you see them? The trains always run on time. Delightful. And he kind of hobbles off into um, Hampstead. Um, we see Orwell, who kind of like looks around and he goes, I don't believe this is my stop, actually. And he sits back down. Um, and the little beetles hop down and they also like crawl out. And um, we see in the in the back of the caboose, we see um, Herbert, who is um, like slowly and tentatively getting off of the train with his duffel bag. Um, How long has that kid been on here? He looks around um, and kind of like pushes up his um, hat for the first time and takes the um, toothpick out of his mouth and he goes, Huh. Weird. And he Tommy, tosses he's... the um, toothpick at the train, and he walks off. And Tommy sees Urban and he's like, Liar! <laughs> so he shouts it. Yeah, Oswin also joins in. Meanie! <laughs> um, Herbert looks back and like, <sighs> Hmm. What can I do? Because this is, like, our more childish, child safe. Um, he already shot, his, he already flicked his toothpick at the train. Um, oh, you know what? He sticks his tongue out at the both of you. And, like, <gasps> throws his hands to the side, like, what are you gonna do? And then, like, turns around and walks around. Oh, Tommy yeah. starts trying to go after him! Um, Carol, uh, Carol, Tommy is, Tommy like, is like, wiggling <laughs> off of the train. Um, <laughs> as Tommy is t t tearing off, you hear a psst. What? You turn on your shoulder is Irene, the red, the red butterfly. And she goes, I gotta get out of here. You can't leave me on this train. Carol slightly lifts up her hat to let her un in. <laughs> Um, this absolutely has to be a move. What? Is it? Yeah, the conductor doesn't want Irene to leave. But the conductor's not seeing this. Th that would be what the role is for, to leave without the conductor noticing. Is this a grift? Or a skidoo? Or a... We're not running yet. Cause mischief? I guess it's escape. It could be cause mischief. Cause mischief. Um, I would also take Skidoo. Can I maybe roll something I'm good at for once this <laughs> round? <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, Carol. You can step up and protect the... <laughs> oh, I would I let you do that. Step up, yeah. Alright. But, I mean, Skidoo is still something you're good at, Jamie. It's also Steam. Yeah, but it's a minus two plus two, so it's a zero. What'd you get on Step Up? Uh, that is a seven. You protect your friend, but put yourself into imminent danger? Mm. Um. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do classic uh, DMs thing. I will let you sneak Irene off the train under your crown, but someone will notice that you did that. I can handle it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you step off the train and you hear Irene whisper, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Um, and with everyone off, um, the conductor goes, right, right. Well, this has taken far too much time. We're, we're several seconds behind schedule and I would hate to, Marquis would have my hide. And he pulls the lever and the doors like magic themselves back shut and then disappear into the wall. And the train like peels out of the station. 
Carol kind of waves after it. Um, the train takes off. Somewhere in the wood, we see a figure, tall, lanky, skeletal, with a wolf-like head, bits of um, vegetation and plant life growing out from underneath his suit. He kind of, like, twists his head a little bit, and then he, he reaches his hand out, and we see one of the hollow guard, the um, nutcracker creatures, this nutcracker is painted to look like Frankenstein. It walks up and it places a clipboard in his hand and he like scrolls down a list of names and he's like, The Caesars, Carol, Oswin, Herbert, Irene. Naughty, naughty Irene has left her post. And he kind of rubs his gloved hands together. And he hands it back to the Frankenstein Nutcracker. And he goes, Disobedient children will have to be dealt with. And then we cut back to our kids. Um, heading off into Three. Hampstead, um, which is a very nice town in the woods. Um, much bigger and much more fleshed out than um, Toffeewell. It, it's it's more of a town and not like a small village. Um, and it is bustling. It is filled with boar people. Like, there are all these really big, like, pigs with tusks and very thick matted fur um, that are getting along. Um, Carol, as you're walking, um, you lift up your um, crown and out flutters this scarlet red um, butterfly. And she goes, thank you a lot. Um, sorry. Uh, my name is Irene. Hi. It's nice to properly meet you. I know we met on the train, but that wasn't yeah. really... You know. Formalities. Yeah. Uh I owe you. I've been I've been stuck on that train for a for a really long time. No, no, no. You don't know us. No, I mean I'm seriously, thank you. Um and thank you, Tommy and Oswin. You convinced the conductor to stop the train. I I haven't been able to do that. Uh, did you sit with him and like, and like just just uh, spend some time, not just going through and doing job. I mean, like, say he seemed really lonely. That conductor was really dumb. I didn't hey! know any of the songs. I mostly just know like the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> no, I didn't know any of the songs. Yeah, I I noticed. I but he still he just was lonely. He just wanted to have someone talking to him. I I guess. Um, he mo I was sent to the train to like find myself. I guess, and I ended up serving snacks with Raggedy Ann. Oh shoot, Raggedy Ann! Is Raggedy Ann? Oh no! <laughs> That's why Tommy was about to be like, "Is Raggedy Ann gonna say okay?" Um, I don't know. I don't know if, like, Raggedy Ann was, like, a person? Uh, I mean... So are you a person, too? Like a kid? Yeah, I'm like a, like, I'm a girl. Yeah, me too. Well, no, not a girl. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. What happened to you? I, uh, I ate a pumpkin from a witch's garden when I was really hungry. And now oh. I'm a bat. Mm. Um. Well, now I don't want to say my thing. Uh, go for it! I, I'm a pumpkin kid! No, you'll, you'll think it's stupid. No! This is a judgment-free zone. You saw what I did. I wish to be a butterfly... Oh, that's cool. That's fun. And then he got bored of it. 
No, I, I, th- I thought I could change back, but, um... Ah! It's kind of a one-wish, one-ticket kind of deal. Wait, 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 wait. Where, wait. where did you wish? I don't know, somewhere in these woods. Like a wishing well? This whole place, no, not oh. a wishing well. Okay. It was like a lady. Uh. I, I guess you could call her a witch. Where is this witch? I don't know, man. I don't know Somewhere either. in these stupid woods. I'm just trying to find out. Maybe she can help us get home. Yeah, I've kind of been looking for I, a cottage again, That's too. what I asked her. She said she she said she said couldn't grant that wish because it would oh. uh, go against her agreement with the Marquis. Why does it really go back to the Marquis? The Marquis is a meanie. Because the Marquis is... Big and yeah, he's he's a he's a mar a marquini. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oofa doofa, that was that's what my mom drinks. Um, <laughs> that was terrible. That's what my mom drinks. I love that. Um, well, anyway, uh, I guess I will take off, or I could hang with you guys for a little bit, but I don't really know. Um, I've never been to Hampstead before. Uh, cool, neither have I. Huh, yeah. So, the kids take off into Hampstead, and the camera pans out and starts looking out over this large, bustling town full of pigs. We see the Anderson siblings and Irene and Oswin wandering off. We see Herbert walking with purpose towards a nearby schoolhouse and throwing open the door, and the teacher and all of the children looking back at him, they are all boars and little pigs, and he, like, scans the desks and then slams the door shut and storms off. And we see back on the train, we see Raggedy Ann offering Orwell the skeleton a little pumpkin pie, and we see a very large badger singing and making jokes to himself all alone. Hey Mark Experience listeners, it's end credits time. I know you love hearing this part, but I'd like to remind you guys that you can find us on Tumblr, Instagram, and even TikTok. And if you'd like to buy the music, you can buy it all at markexperience.bandcamp.com. We also have a constantly growing collection of merch at redbubble.com slash people slash mark dash experience, where you can buy posters and shirts and stickers and all that. If you want to support your favorite editor and musician, you can head over to my coffee account at coffee.com slash Jamie Remy. That's spelled J-A-M-I-E-R-E-M-Y. Mark Experience can be located basically anywhere podcasts exist now, so you can listen wherever's easiest. See you next episode!